a public health planner, as was mentioned before, and I work for the planning department. Uh, I have my coworker Sherry Meads, who has been uh, working with us in, in the same um, general plan draft and who's part of the planning uh, department too. And we want to share with you today uh, all the process that we have gone through to create uh, what, what you're going to be looking at today. And uh, I am going to start sharing my uh, presentation. Sorry. There we go. Uh, so uh, for today's agenda, uh, we have a bilingual presentation just for if anyone in the public would like to, to look at the presentation in Spanish so you're, you're aware of it. And if, um, for, if you require any um, specific translation for, for the things that we have in here, please feel free to stop me and, and we'll do that too. Um, we're going to talk today about five specific topics. Number one, the background on the general plan update so you can know where we were and how we got here because it's been a, a two-year process and we want to let you know like how this uh, this process was created, why are we here, uh, why uh, do we have a general plan, what is it, and why, why are we presenting uh, here uh, today with the Art and Public Places Committee. Uh, the draft general plan uh, introduction, just to let you know what is this document and why are we presenting it here. Uh, third, how, if, how would we have been doing community involvement in terms of how do we involve most of the community members to know that this exists and how they can be engaged if they want to, of course, but not letting anyone be excluded from the process because we know planning is a complicated process and we also know that there's a lot of, of people, uh, including young uh, people who usually don't know that this is happening and this is a process that uh, will impact them in the next 30 years and everyone here in this table and in the community. So we want you to be aware of it and uh, help us spread the word. Uh, uh, number four, we're going to tell you a little bit about art as uh, youth civic engagement. This was a partnership that we did with the public art uh, program to do community involvement, and we wanted to show it to you. We have not done so in, a, in the previous presentations because we were not done yet, but um, now we are, and you're the first um, uh, committee or board that is going to receive this this presentation. I hope you like it. The, the next one is going to be city council and our next steps. Where are we going to go after this? So um, just for, for people who are not familiar with planning, uh, well, what we do in the planning department and planners in general is we think about how, uh, how to plan communities. And what does this mean? Basically, where are we going to place parks, jobs, housing, uh, different types of shopping spaces, entertainment, and in this case, art too, right? So uh, we uh, know that this is, this is something that has been done for a lot of years, usually not as an interactive way as we are doing it these days, and this because of a lot of changes that the state has gone through, but also because uh, there's, different, uh, uh, there's a different style of planning these days. And for us, the general plan update was an opportunity to do this in a way more comprehensive way and to also uh, provide an opportunity for our community to rethink and revisit uh, planning uh, policies and programs, which is what you're going to see on the draft. And the goal that we had with this program or the, this project, the general plan update, was to think about how we want to improve Santa Rosa. And that's why we call this uh, project Santa Rosa Forward. In Spanish, we call it Santa Rosa Avanza. And uh, we wanted this to be a very uh, inclusive process of the community. So, so you know, uh, the general plan process went through different steps. We are right now on the draft, but this has been a two year process where we have been doing uh, different steps to get to where we are. Number one, we designed how to engage the community because we wanted this to be a community-based plan. Uh, we started thinking, how are we going to involve community members? And then uh, next steps. Uh, we created an existing condition uh, report, which is basically a document that has every demographic information that you need about the city, every information that you need about geography, about um, um, disasters, earthquakes, whatever you think that you would like to know about uh, the city in terms of statistical information, as well as any other, uh, yeah, any other type of demographic or, or physical or geographical information, please go there and look for it. It's it's an amazing document. Uh, and then we uh, created a vision together with the community that that was the first part of involving community members. And we asked people, how do you want Santa Rosa to be in 30 years? And we got amazing responses. We'll show you uh, what ended up being the final response. And then we went 
through a process that is much more planning focused, but I want to give you a quick explanation of what that means. And it, it was a land use and circulation alternatives. I'll show it in a minute. And then we went to a preferred alternative. How do we want the city to be growing in the next 30 years? And by growing, I, I, not, I do not mean only housing, but also where are we going to establish uh, different community um, spaces and different things that the community needs, including services. And this got us after this process to get into the draft general plan, which is a document that I'm holding in my hand that has uh, goals, policies and actions. And that basically is going to guide what the city is going to do for the next 30 years. This plan is uh, a draft for general plan to 2050, which means once it's adopted, it will last uh, for 30 years uh, with the horizon of 2050 being the, the end of this of this general plan. Uh, that said, I am just showing this so you know what documents you can find on our website. We have a community involvement strategy. We, we have an existing conditions report, which is a document I mentioned about all the data that uh, you can have about the city. We created a briefing book for, for people who don't want to read the whole document, but are like, oh, I'm interested in knowing some information about the city of Santa Rosa. Our vision statement, which is what we build with the community, the alternatives workbook, what the alternatives of growth that we show to the community, and the preferred alternative, which is the final step that we had before getting into our draft. Um, so, you know, um, the vision that we uh, created together with the community is shown in, in the screen. And I, I actually like to read it because I think it's a, it's a vision that I like about my city and that I would like to, other people to think about while we're talking about the, the documents and the policies that are going to get us there. And so um, what we got from all the words and, um, and um, workshops that we had with the community was Santa Rosa is a diverse, equitable and sustainable community built on civic engagement that empowers everyone to provide and support equal and affordable opportunities to obtain good housing, education and jobs and to enjoy uh, vibrant cultural events and arts and to live healthy lives in resilient neighborhoods that adapt to social and environmental change. So this, this was the vision that was uh, created and this guided us to the alternatives, uh, meaning the options that we gave the community to think about growth inside the city of Santa Rosa. So uh, for people who are not familiar with state processes connected to housing, we have to uh, fulfill a certain number of housing units that we have to build during a, a cycle of eight years. And so we have to tell the, um, the, the state of, of California, we're gonna build this amount of housing that you requested us, and it's gonna be allocated in these spaces. So based on that, uh, we had three alternatives that were created for the next 30 years. The first one, establish corridors. It, that means focusing growth and um, all the, all the um, changes in the corridors that uh, connect the city. Second, neighbor, neighborhood main streets, which means uh, focusing our growth in the uh, main streets that the community has where the neighborhoods are already built. And last but not least, uh, housing everywhere. This we consider is kind of the status quo right now. People don't really uh, are not really told where exactly they have to build. We just know there's open spaces or parcels where people can build a space and if they owe them own them or they can buy them and build in there, they just can do it. And there's no strategy on how we do that. Um, we don't uh, we don't have it in here, but the final draft uh, and I'll show it later on a map was a combination of the first two, meaning we mixed uh, established corridors and neighborhood main streets, which means the city is going to grow throughout the main corridors. And we decided to do neighborhood um, growth around some areas of the city that we call areas of change. Uh, meaning that, uh, you know, Santa Rosa is a large enough city that we cannot walk or bike or will uh, to all all the city in less than 15 minutes. So what we are thinking in, in terms of how we created the areas of change is defining areas where people can get access to every service or uh, need that they have in a biking or willing or walking distance so that we have uh, a reduction on our emissions, um, greenhouse gas emissions, but also uh, put people out to have healthier uh, lives. And in the policies that you will see connected to art and culture, you also will see that we included create having uh, access to art in this specific locations. And I'm mentioning this because I think this might be something that you want to know later on. Um, 
So uh, we get to the to the meaty uh, part of this of this presentation. Um, this is the Santa Rosa General Plan um, draft, and uh, the way that it's organized, so you know, is uh, chapters. Um, the state requires us to have um, eight different uh, eight elements. Um, actually, it requires nine, but the city of Santa Rosa only requires to comply with eight because we are not one of the most polluted cities in the in the state. And mostly, the San Joaquin Valley requires an air quality um, element. We don't require to to comply with that one. That said. Uh, these are all the chapters that are included in the general plan 2050 and we have land use and economic development, which is the first one. Uh, you will see that the required ones are in green. The um, red ones are um, something that we are bringing from our previous general plan that already exists. Um, and uh, yellow uh, is the elements that are that were not required in the past, but are now required and we're including them in our in our general plan. Um, the second chapter is urban design, historic preservation and art and culture, um, circulation, open space, conservation and greenhouse, green has, green has house emissions it, uh, reduction is for um, the next chapter that includes all this um, all these elements. Safety, climate, resilience, noise, public services and facilities is another uh, group of chapters. And health equity and environmental justice is another uh, group of, of elements that uh, is the last chapter number six. You would not see housing in this, in this uh, draft. And the reason that you're not gonna see housing is because the housing element, and you probably have heard this term before, uh, and if not, I'm, I'm very happy to elaborate on it, is an is a document that is part of the general plan, but it has a different cycle. This one is a, uh, a document that will leave till 2050. The housing element uh, gets updated every eight years. So it was updated in April and approved and adopted by, by city council and certified by the state of California a few months ago. So it exists and it will be part of the general plan. We're just not putting it out again because we will not receive um, comments from it again since it's already certified will open that again in eight four uh, years. And um, that can uh, be discussed again with the things that we hear from, from this engagement. So, you know, uh, we have goals, which are the uh, ideas that we want to get to, to get us to the vision that you heard uh, from, from the city of Santa Rosa. Then we have policies, which is a lower level of how are we going to do this, uh, which policies we need to implement. And finally, actions, things that need uh, need to be really concrete and how are we going to do this. Just uh, to remind you, this, this is a very high level document that guides our city council and our uh, decision making at city level. Uh, but um, it has to be uh, general enough to get, give the staff flexibility to work uh, within the boundaries that we uh, are establishing. Um, that said, I'm just going to go to the content and just uh, I'm going to show you two maps uh, so you know when we're talking about equity priority areas and areas of change, what we mean on the ground. So uh, this map is our equity priority areas. Uh, what we did based on um, the Plan Bay Area um, methodology, which is uh, the plan that is uh, that guides us uh, to as a city following up on the um, Bay Area's government's uh, association. Uh, we are we are identifying the areas that are low income and majority people of color um, and uh, areas that are very highly polluted. Why are we identifying these areas? One, because we know uh, areas where a majority of people color leave have been areas that were redlined, meaning uh, they were separated from the rest of the communities and uh, underinvested in the night services. Uh, second, we're using also low income because we know um, population has moved and things have changed, but we still can identify where lower income communities are settled and ident identifying these two intersections, we usually find the areas that are underinvested in our city, unfortunately, but we're trying to reverse what happened in the past and we're trying to identify the areas to focus our investment on those areas. And this is what we are showing on the screen, the, the uh, purple layers are our equity priority areas. That said, and you will see some intersection with this other map, those are the areas of change, meaning the neighborhoods where we're going to focus our growth, as well as the change that we're trying to uh, figure out to invest on our infrastructure so people can walk, bike, and go to all the 
neighborhoods that are in these areas so people can have access to the main services that they require on a walking distance that is less than 15 minutes. So that said, uh, you will see that some of these areas are similar to the previous map and I'll, I'll show it again. Some others are not. And you will see that the east side of the, of the city has some areas where we actually want change in terms of uh, including mixed use and adding other spaces. You will see Oakland in there, which is an area that actually required us, they want us to, to bring um, mixed use to their area because they feel like they're very far away from the services that are provided. And some people actually wanna have walking uh, distance services and have access to other uh, amenities that the rest of the, of the community can't have access to. Um, that said, I just, Gonna give, I'm gonna give you a very high level brief of what is included, the new ideas that are included on, on each of the um, elements or, or chapters. And for the land use and economic development one, uh, I would like to tell you that it's, it's bringing a lot of policies and actions from the previous um, land use and economic development elements that we had on our current general plan, but it also adds new things. Number one, uh, require construction measures that make exposure to air pollution less severe for developments within five, uh, 500 feet of highways 101 and 12. This means um, our highways usually are the areas that have the highest amount of pollution. We're going to require um, our um, developers and, and the construction to have uh, mitigation strategies, which means maybe sometimes, sometimes uh, adjusting uh, windows. We don't know specifically what is going to be the requirement. We're just going to ask people to uh, who are in the development world to be able to mitigate this exposure to pollution because we know asthma and other diseases that are um, uh, that are um, being um, spread in our community are actually located with more concentration on those areas. And so following uh, be, uh, best practices from other jurisdictions and from the state, we're doing that. Uh, we're also supporting micro entrepreneurs. And this is something that is gonna focus on neighborhood centered businesses, which means also uh, letting new job creations uh, be part of, of neighborhood focused strategies. We're not only investing on high level um, uh, businesses, but also like small ones and home-based and mobile uh, food vendors, as well as community uh, events that could be happening in, in non-residential zoning uh, districts throughout the, the areas that we uh, showed you earlier. Uh, for our um, element uh, or chapter three, which is uh, circulation and um, open space conservation and greenhouse gas reduction, we're going to have uh, a lot of things focused on number one, circulation, how the people move around the city. Number two, open space and conservation, basically green spaces that help us uh, with a lot of different things, but also uh, greenhouse gas reduction and our specific greenhouse gas reduction strategy, which is going to be part of this of this element. We have some uh, goals, policies and actions. I have to mention that starting um, the, the second week of October, we're going to have the document out just focused on greenhouse gas reduction. So you will see some of the uh, actions in here, but there's a new element coming after this one to just talk about that specific topic. We know our community is very focused on uh, reducing emissions, and that's something that we take seriously, that we'll have um, an update uh, from our community, and that will be included in the general plan. Uh, Connected to this, what are the new ideas in this element? Uh, one, prioritizing transportation that is active transportation. We want people out of their cars, that's the reality. And for that, we need a lot of steps, uh, including providing safe access for people to walk and bike and also take transit. So the investments for uh, our community are gonna be prioritized for those types of, of mobility. And so we know this is a big change and we wanted to Put it in here first because then we will have to go and review formulas on how we provide money to the to the different um, construction uh, and capital pro investment projects that we have throughout the city. Uh, number two, we're going to continue reducing parking requirements. This is something very unpopular and we know about it, but we are. this is part of the strategy that the city is following to get to the objectives that we have on the greenhouse gas uh, reduction strategy. And number three, but not less important, this is something that we 
have also heard as very controversial, but we're uh, proposing prohibiting new drive throughs um, through all type of services. Mm -hmm. And um, this is something that uh, not only for uh, greenhouse gas reduction, but we are also thinking about placemaking and how we want people to start sharing space. And this is um, consistent with the strategies that we're proposing. Um, Number four, um, urban design and arts and culture, um, urban design, historic preservation and arts and culture. Um, this uh, is kind of like the focus of, of the work that uh, you do here. And we want to be mindful of, of this uh, of this uh, particular chapter with you. We want um, to let you know that this this has three goals. The third one is focused specifically on arts and culture and um, the, the new ideas that we have included in here are connected to urban design in terms of uh, creating strips with large canopies uh, uh, of trees between the road and the sidewalk along commercial streets to support safety and placemaking, which is something that is more focused on, on, on planning. However, we also are uh, trying to remove obstacles for uh, owners of historical properties to support uh, preservation, which is another part. And connected to art and culture, I would say uh, we have a more uh, comprehensive uh, uh, set of goals, policies, and actions that were worked uh, with the the public art uh, program team, and who are uh, trying to focus on um, diversifying the spaces where we have um, where we are including art projects, as well as uh, the voices that we are elevating through the public art program. And I will let um, uh, the team talk more about it if they if they want later. But I, I just uh, want to point that th those things out because I think. This is one of the elements that is not mandatory, but that we have heard loud and clear from the community that they want this to be part of our, our decision making and the priorities that the city is establishing. So just want to make uh, that comment so, so you're um, aware why we're including this. Um, our element number five, which is uh, probably not the matter, uh, the subject matter for, for this, um, for this um, space, but we uh, are aware that all the community is uh, concerned and, and active and, and uh, knowledgeable about um, safety, climate, resilience, noise, and public services and facilities, and particularly because the fire um, fire connected, um, the fire PTSD that the community has, as well as the awareness about fires is located in this place. But unfortunately, that's not the only type of, of uh, built environment risk that we have in the city. We also have a fair amount of geologic and seismic activity as well as flooding and um, emergency preparedness uh, measures that we want to make the community aware of. And basically the new ideas are focused on, on fire um, and uh, two of the things that we are uh, proposing in here is creating opportunities to relocate existing development that are, that are uh, in higher uh, fire risk areas, meaning trying to um, convince people to have a retreat, uh, manage uh, retreat, which is uh, basically buying property and, and taking it away from the fire uh, risk areas to avoid having to get in there in case there's, there's fires and to have a buffer space where uh, communities can uh, know in advance where a fire is coming and, and take advantage of that space to be able to uh, gather safely in a different location. So I'm trying to be very um, non-technical with the words that I'm using so that if anyone is hearing in, in, in the uh, community, I don't know if we have anyone in, on the on the uh, line uh, in, in Zoom, but just just to make clear that uh, this is something that is that we are exploring. The second one is exploring options to prohibit uh, more residential density in in higher um, risk areas, um, higher uh, fire prone areas. So um, we would be the first city doing this if if we um, if we pass this through council. This still out for public comment because we want to hear from the community. So uh, all the things that I mentioned are proposals that we are putting out there, but there's we're waiting for feedback from community members as well as boards, commissions, and city council to make our final decision and create the final document that will be um, adopted by city council eventually. So last but not least, we have the health equity and environmental justice element. This element is a new one. Um, that the state is requiring every time that people uh, adopt uh, more than two elements of the general plan, meaning uh, this is pretty new. We have never had one. Uh, the only mandatory element is environmental justice, but we mixed it with health and equity because we thought it was extremely connected to what we want to do in terms of the policies and, and actions that we want to have in the city. And uh, the main ideas here are 
a lot because there's this is a new element, but we're basically focusing on urban agriculture, food, uh, as well as violence prevention um, and tobacco and alcohol uh, restriction uh, for community members, particularly youth and people who are um, vulnerable to um, to any any type of, of addiction. And uh, we are also um, trying to implement a health in all policies measure, which means every decision that we make within the city has to be made thinking about people's health too. So um, talking about health, we're not just talking about the lack of disease, but trying to let people have lives where they can thrive. So that, that's a, a broader idea and something that would have to be implemented, but the, we're establishing here the goals, policies and actions to get to that place. And um, just for you to know, uh, what have we done in terms of engagement so people can start looking at this draft while we're here with you and we appreciate the opportunity to share not only with you, but the people who watch the, the videos and the Zoom uh, meeting on the other side of the, of the screen. And um, we have been doing bilingual community open houses, which means we've hosted events where we show these maps. We are there for, for community members. We have all the planners available, not only planners from the planning department, but people from transit, people from uh, transportation, so they can talk to people and hear what they're saying. And uh, we've done one on every uh, quadrant of the city so that there's access for people to be able to go without having to get into their cars. Uh, we have uh, hosted one uh, virtual event for people who are still not um, ready to go in person and still want to do uh, some meetings. We have uh, had 10 pop-ups throughout the city, which is basically tabling, but we don't only table, we bring our whole set of maps so people can see uh, what we're working on. And we have an online survey for people who don't want to read, but they want to provide their opinion on the main policies that we just presented. So we're aware a lot of people are not that interested in planning. We're not that interesting, we know, but we're trying to make it more, more uh, accessible for people. So we're doing that bilingual survey and it's on our website. We have a Conveyo app, which is a city platform for people who are really nerdy about planning and want to get deep into it. And that's a PDF uh, app that lets you provide comments at um, like a PDF. So we're basically receiving all the comments. I think we have around 120 comments right now in that app. So we have a fair amount of people who are like getting deep into the. What app is that again? The Comeo app. Okay. It's, oh. uh, that one is in um, Santa Rosa Forward.com. Yeah. And uh, we're also receiving uh, comments through our email, which is srforward at srcd.org, and our website, which is uh, Santa Rosa Forward.com. And all the things that I have mentioned are located in our um, website and you can access uh, anytime to, to see them. And last but not least, we are going to wait to see the results of the survey and all the information that we got from the open houses and uh, figure out which demographics we missed. So we're saving the focus groups to do a very last engagement with the folks that we probably didn't hear from. And that's going to be our last step. Um, that said, I want to say that um, our work through uh, um, the collaboration with the public art team has been amazing. And um, this in this partnership with them and Kinsey Creative, we have created a series of art engagements that are focused on um, working with youth from 5 to 24 years old. And uh, we have been working with seven local artists to expand the participation of youth, which was the space where we were missing uh, to hear from. Uh, we literally had 15% less of the actual uh, population that we have as youth uh, involved in the in the responses to surveys and participation on the workshops. So we decided to focus on, on a very specific activity or activities for them. Um, a coloring book was created by uh, Blanca Molina, and this is a bilingual coloring book that uh, is uh, targeting grades three to eight, um, and it's focused on health and environmental justice so that um, young people can know what planning is, why uh, are they supposed to be involved, what's uh, what's environment, what is uh, justice, what is uh, how, how can they participate in the future of, of their cities. And we are taking this, this uh, coloring books and we're analyzing them and gathering da data from, from there to hear uh, what youth, young people are uh, willing to, to 
for their city to look like in 30 years. Um, we had an art installation that was uh, created through four art workshops that were facilitated by Erica Lutz and uh, Brianna uh, Hendren, and they were targeting high school, high school students, and they collected uh, the dreams and, and wishes of, of people in the next 30 years for, for Santa Rosa, and they created an amazing uh, art installation that has been uh, located what number the first uh, place that was uh, displaced w was in um, courthouse square the second one in uh, one of our workshops in in a smaller version and we will have a third installation that is going to be hosted during city council on the 26th of, of uh, September and uh, we'll uh, have that installation for around six weeks right four to six weeks i believe uh but that that will be available in our chambers and last but not least we have a song and music video that was created uh, by kayara Patton um through uh the information that she got from four poetry workshops that she hosted in uh santa rosa junior college um in partnership with the black uh, union students and the juvenile hall um, this uh, the data collected was turned into a song in a music video uh, that we actually have available if you're interested on on watching and um i have just a little bit of, of um a couple of pictures from uh, the coloring book, so you can see a little bit of the art that was displayed in this in this coloring book. It's a bilingual book, so half of it is in Spanish, and then you can turn it around, and it's in English, uh, Spanish and English version. And there's, I just wanted to show the map because I thought this was amazing uh, piece of art that actually let kids identify where they lived. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's it's an amazing piece of, of, of art, but also a very great way for us to gather information coming from our youth. And these are some pictures of the um, of the art installation that we had at Courthouse Square and um, some images of how people were interacting with the art and um, just um, also the amazing photography that we got by Genesis Botello, who was um, the one who was taking pictures uh, that day for for the event. And um, is it okay if I if I show the video? It's just gonna take four more minutes, and we're we'll gonna be done after this. <laughs> Oh, I need to set the volume up. I've never shared a video. So. <laughs> oh. What do we have to do? Let me it again. Do I have to share it on the screen share? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I've never done this. I'm like, oh, well, this will be interesting. Uh, Stop our share first. Think so? No, no we're, we're good. Okay, let's try. But it's because I closed the, the microphone. Well, this meets your laptop, but I wonder. I'll have to play around with it. Because see, this is still on. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Let me, I'll mute the room since nobody's in here. Okay. And then at least it'll play Thank you. through Zoom.
No, no, no. I know what is going on. Sorry, I'll I'll do it. Sorry, you can hear you Look like 30 years from now. I wanna know. For myself, my town, my family, my child. I wanna know. Uh. And as I sit here thinking about this life, reimagined in the Santa Rosa dreaming. Yo, wanna know. Cause as it's urban deconstructed, yo, it's hard for me to trust it. Trying to get from A to B with no access to buses. GMO up in our lunches at the air, I'm throwing punches. Honestly, the whole thing makes me sick to my stomach. And we could really talk that talk, but they don't want to touch they don't it. Wanna. I want to see like Fatty Lou, so we can discuss we it. We can talk about Just it. Just all of the tears dropped in the bucket. If you ask me, the whole thing needs some reconstruction. Some fixing. And it ain't cosmetic or prosthetic if it ain't. Inclusive, I don't get it, don't get it. Cause if you get it, she get it, he get it. Why can't I get it? Oh, we get it, yo, we get it. We need love, we need care. Uh, got some loose chains to spare. Uh, we need help, we need help. Uh, that's intact and that's rare. I wanna know, 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 I wanna know. How do they ignore the lives, people striving for their lives, trying to find possible ways around? Are they that blind to see the death rates rise? Ooh. How could they ignore the light? How could we need it to grow? Only darkness in sight. I want to know. Uh, and as I sit here thinking, yeah. it will be a slice of heaven with sustainable living. But clean props design a whole space for our children. Cease the gang and gun violence. Just a few things that I'm feeling. That I'm feeling. We get the bottom. Only way to go is up the water. Pours the same, but we drinking out of different cups. Ah, my mental health is fine tuning. I'm flesh and blood. My God, I'm only human. Only human. It sounds a little crazy, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. And get some rest for those working in the hospitals. Abolish red line barricades. I've been soaked in the pain, but healing is a marinade. Yeah. The underpaid deserve a raise and a parade. The road to redemption, destination, happy days. We need space, we need rest. Hey. To rectify all the mess. Uh, all the mess we need yeah. a break from all the stress. Uh, so we can do what we do best. We do I wanna know, 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 I wanna know. Today is March 27, 2023, my last day in jail. It is a long day, and my mood is happy and nervous. If you are reading this, you are hopefully a free man. I hope you're living in a house with a little yard. I wish your mental health will be better and that you're able to be treated when it isn't. I hope that you're married with two kids. I really hope that your family is happy. I wish for the well-being of Santa Rosa with better mental health services. Do black voices matter? Brown voices matter? Queer voices matter? Uh, do all voices matter? Young voices matter? Poor voices matter? Uh, do broken voices matter? Hurt voices matter? Do the voices matter? Stories written from sorrow, but we desire laughter when you receive an action plan. What you gonna do after? Put it all in motion. Bring light to the hopeless. Come down to our city blocks So you can see just how we rock Can we grow? Can we love? Can we live? Can we live? Can we change? Cause the pain can remain Can remain Nothing less Cause we deserve the best Give me liberty and life Cause it's vital for our survival We need change, it's gonna come uh, Can't have the rain without the sun Just uh, want a piece of the pie uh, Just gave you hella reasons why I wanna know I wanna know I wanna know I wanna know I wanna know
I apologize about that. Um, last but not least, I just. Oh, what's that? <laughs> you can't say it was a fun presentation. <laughs> Um, here we go. So last uh, next steps, uh, we will summarize all the community comments and feedback. This includes yours today, as well as anything that you want to send us after this uh, presentation. We will have the greenhouse, greenhouse gas reduction strategy for public review and engagement after this um, engagement set. And then we will go with um, our environmental report, report public review. Um, for, for those familiar with our CEQA, this is a step that the state requires for us to, to review before adopting the plan. And finally, we, have, we will have a final general plan and final environmental impact report. And those would be finally adopted by, the, um, by our city council. And so um, this is it for, for me, but if you have any specific questions or comments, we're here to take notes or uh, about anything that you want us to do. Yeah, I have a question for the chapter four, um, the chapter goals, and do you have goal number four um, dash three? It's a supported, empowered, thriving, and inclusive Santa Rosa community connected through the power of art. Um, will this be with um, a collaboration with the APPC? And if so, what are your goals, ideas, and wishes for that collaboration? I think it's not only uh, with with the APPC, but also the public art program, as well as uh, many other initiatives that we have had with uh, local artists that we will have with local artists, or that I expect that we have. I believe that that one uh, was worked together with um, Tara and and the team. So I, I would also like her to to jump in if, if she wants to. But um, for us, it's looking for alternatives on how we we involve community members, and we not we know a fair amount of people are not interested in other topics necessarily from, uh, for example, planning as we are uh, showing today, but they might be interested on involving in art and try to identify alternative ways to have community involved, if that makes any sense. And Tara, please jump in if you have any anything yeah. else to say. I was going to say that that goal is um, a part of our uh, vision statement that was developed through the public art strategic planning process. So that is our current vision statement. And um, I um, contributed a lot of uh, suggested rewrites to the art and culture, culture section of this draft based on our current strategic plan so that there was better alignment with what the public art program has already identified through our process and our community outreach um, that can be uh, kind of policy level recommendations for considerations going forward as the city looks much, much farther ahead and broader. Um, and I, they're, they're not, I didn't take specific like strategies and tactics that we're currently working on implementing. I took the bigger general statements um, so that there's room for us each year as we are implementing our programs to make recommendations to other parts of the city on how we may be able to partner and approach some of the um, broader policies through an arts lens like we did the arts engagements for the um, for this project so thank you well, thank you for the question yeah just a bit of housekeeping first i um thank you for the presentation and do want to move on to questions from our committee uh, thank you lisa for getting that started uh, since this is not an item that requires a motion, we can have open discussion on this topic. So uh, is there anyone else who would like to ask a question uh, regarding this presentation you just received? Um, I'm cur just curious, um, how many people do you generally have when uh, you, you throw the pop-ups for information about the general plan? The pop-ups have been very variable. So for example, the ones that we have at the uh, 5K race, probably around 100, 150 people, I would say, like it was very packed. The wildfire event, how many people were there? Oh, the wildfire resilience readiness fair, we were parked in a place that people had to walk past us to go to um, some seminars. And apparently there were about 400 people wow. that attended that. And then 
Santa Rosa Junior College Welcome Day. That was another one that there were hundreds of people. Then I banned one at Cesar Chavez Language Academy that was a food distribution that was not super well attended because people had other other priorities at the time. So mm -hmm. as Beatrice said, very, so very good. pop-ups are not necessarily just for in, in the exactly. general plan, it's a, a larger event. It can people be. People right. are exposed to the... We're trying to get to where people are. Right. That's right. part of our okay. um, strategy, kind of like knowing where people are going to go and just be there and be available right. for anyone who's willing to, to talk to us. And, I mean, we find locations where we can find uh, people gathering, like farmers markets, sure. food deliveries, mm -hmm. like we, we do almost anything that comes up to our mind that we think like could be successful. And then I think you mentioned the number 120. You said you had about 120 people that actually responded to comments. We don't comments. know how many people. I think less people than 120 because the people who we have in there in that uh, comment response from the Conveyo app. That's I was talking only about the online app. Okay. Comments throughout the whole plan. I think we have around twenty four thousand. Oh, we have a lot. Okay. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's it's a been a of... very long process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank could, you. Could you speak briefly to how that feedback information is sort of metabolized within the organization? Yeah. So, um, for example, like today's um, today's meeting, we collect all the information and questions and comments specifically that, that we received. And we're going to gather after we end up the presentations after city council and just make a list of all the things that we heard and how we can change them and sit down with the document and review it and do it, do redo what we need to redo, add what we need to add, take off what we need to, to take as well as with community uh, comments that will happen after October 1st, because that's when the survey closes. So then we will go and gather all the feedback that we have from um, from community members in the survey, as well as the uh, workshops that we hosted. We hosted the workshops or open houses with uh, a consultant team. So they gather all the comments and they uh, process them for, for us and let us know this amount of people want protected bike lanes. And I'm quoting this huh. opportunity, this, this specific comment, because we know that's like huh. one of the largest amount of, of people who have mentioned uh, something very specific. But then we have other comments where we need to bring the, the experts to, to provide feedback on. And we usually have a meeting with the TAC, the Technical Advisory Committee, which is basically every staff member uh, or every, every team from the city that has anything to do with the specific policies and actions. And for example, uh, we need to check in with fire department to see if specific things that were required by the community can actually be done. So we also review um, if it's feasible to, to do what the community members are, are asking us for. And then we will come out again to show the, the, the final document um, showing what, what, is, what was included and was not. It is, it is a process that um, takes a little bit of more like, um, it's not um, straightforward that someone provides some feedback and then that happens because if that was the case, there's a lot of, of comments that we have about do not build any more housing. <laughs> and that's something that we can't do just because it's our requirement for it from the state. And so we evaluate which things can be included and which things can't. And in some cases it has to do with regulation and some others capacity of, of the staff to actually be able to do things. Uh, I'm putting, the, um, I'm talking about the example of, of protected bike lanes and fire, because that's been a very complex discussion where um, fire department can't put uh, protected bike lanes everywhere because the the um, the fire trucks can't go through through the area if the bike lanes, uh, the protected bike lanes do not let them in. So it's, it's, complicated discussion that has to go farther, but I'm just setting this as an example of things that do not get in uh, if they're provided as feedback. Question. Uh, so regarding the uh, art engagement, art as youth and civic engagement, um, the coloring book by Blanca Molina, is that available um, outside of the engagement process that you uh, described? Um, I'd yeah. be curious about facilitating a few of those. Yes. We, we have a couple copies, either between between the two of us, um, that we can provide to committee members mm -hmm. as a blank copy. 
um, if that if you want to see that. Um, I don't think there's still an opportunity to distribute them to gather data. We're past that because we've now compiled the data into a final report. Right. Yeah, Is that yes. correct? Unfortunately, yeah. yes. We we used all those and partner with a lot of different organizations that were not just people who came to our events. We partner with um, the summer camps. We partner with some schools. We partner with Latino service providers, like a lot of different organizations and nonprofits and art organizations who helped us distribute them. And then for some of them, uh, we gave incentives to teachers so that they would collect them and they were given a gift card by our consultants. And so they would buy pizza for the kids and uh, they would buy like um, party favors for the kids, things like that, so that they it was there was an incentive for them to give them back because we knew a lot of people wanted to keep them. <laughs> so we, we, we had to, to do some strategies around that. But yeah, we have some, and if, if you're interested, we're happy to do it. Because for us, that, that strategy is not only for collecting information, it was actually also a strategy to bring kids into the planning world in some way and We've done other partnerships with school with schools in the past, but I don't think they were as fun as this one because mm -hmm. we usually did classes. And I mean, people pay attention to you because they're there, but I don't think it was as fun or as, as beautiful as it, it was done this time. So yes, we're all happy to, to share them with you. I'm curious if any of the art projects um, sort of caused the members of the planning committee to reshape the way that they their approach to the work or the way that they saw, uh, you know, sort of conceived of the, 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 the internal processes. Are you talking about like our team internally or the planning yeah. commission? Uh, specifically? Well, you're, I guess your team internally. Oh, so. yeah. I, I think for us, it, at least for me directly, and I don't know, uh, Sherry, we had done something similar in the past in the department that you know of, but no. It, it was for us a new way to figure out that we can actually um, connect with a different set of, of folks who would probably have not come to, to the rest of the engagement, number one. Number two, a different way of collecting information that is pretty useful for, for us. Uh, a fair amount of policies that we created for the environmental justice element came from youth from mm -hmm. those uh, workshops and events. I mean, I was there too hearing with, with community um, members and young people mostly were saying and a big part of like urban agriculture and food came from from what we heard from from people so yes substantial information was it was um, taken from from those um, workshops to other places but I think the third part that I really appreciated personally was that we were not only extracting information from community members we were teaching something the the artists were were teaching skills and uh, art uh, projects to to the young people that they enjoyed and that they took uh, aside from from whatever uh, planning information they received. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I guess I mean what I'm sort of curious about is the extent to which um, the engagement with the arts is primarily uh, a question of distributing information or you know opening communication with oh. <laughs> a broader community or if it has this other dimension of knowledge production within the process of, you know, kind of iterative design. I, I think all of that. I think all of that. I mean, I, I'm sorry for the long answer, but yes, I think all of that and a way where we identify we can get to different audiences too. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. And I mean, I'll just add that it really showed um, the importance of doing this work because of how valuable it was and reaching, as everybody's already said, demographics that we maybe wouldn't hear from and their input was so valuable. And just creating that partnership and also trying to, to build that level of trust with what you know the city is doing and that their voices do matter. You know, Seeing this video made, seeing that art installation, that kind of thing. I think it's been incredibly valuable. As Patrice mentioned, we've never done anything like this in mm -hmm. our group. So working with Tara's team has really taught us a lot. And, and I'm hopeful that we'll just continue to do this from now on. So it's, it's groundbreaking for us, in my opinion, and super important. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I will now ask for public comment on this item. Recording secretary, are there any public comments on Zoom? Uh, we don't have any attendees on Zoom and no attendees in person. Okay, great, that answers my next question. 
Uh, seeing none, we will bring this item back to the committee for any further discussion. Do any committee members wish to, wish to ask any additional questions or make any additional comments? It's been a really fruitful conversation yeah. so far. <laughs> Thank you for telling us what's new. I do have a question. Um, where to go? Sorry about that. So the areas of change and equity priority areas. Um, if the APPC were going to, what would you be your recommendation for the APPC to focus on? I, I'm assuming the equity priority areas, uh, but how uh, can we actually, you know, contribute or do some kind of, you know, collaborations for the um, the areas that are planning for change too? Um, to incorporate some kind of art and culture and you know what is needed in those areas. yeah I mean that's a great question thank you thank you for asking I, I believe that um, a big part of, of what we're focusing our policies on is to uh, put our uh, money and our priorities where the policy is so uh, infrastructure is a big part of what we're trying to to address in these areas but I believe that uh, if you plan projects, make sure that you include them, because uh, I think because of the of the underinvestment that we have in in um, a fair amount of this of the areas that we're mapping in here, a lot of the organization or events or things that are hosted th throughout uh, the city usually don't go there, and that's the areas where we have people who don't or can't drive or don't have access to anything else but public transit and um, making sure that we come to those communities, number one. But number two, that if we're not, at least we're focusing our outreach in there and letting people know that things are happening outside of that area too. Um, we've been also very mindful about bringing bus passes with us to events. So when we invite people to come to a workshop, come to an art exhibit, we give them uh, bus passes as a uh, incentive for them to be able to come and not have to pay for 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 transit and I, I know this is not going to solve the problem substantially but we're trying to figure out creative ways to break those barriers that we have because it's not only the location it's also the access to resources as well as um, the opportunities that people have or the cost of opportunity that people have the other one has been um, providing childcare. We know a lot of families are not available, uh, have no, no additional income available to pay for, for childcare. So all the workshops or events that we host, uh, we bring childcare to them. So this is just like additional information that maybe is useful for you to host or um, have events or have art available. And if you want to, you want people to join like offering this other things that support things that we have heard are barriers that people are facing. and. Um, if it helps in any other way, language uh, barriers for those areas, a lot of these areas are majority Spanish speaking or other languages because we have more than 15 other languages that are spoken in the community. Not all of them monolingual speakers, but um, that we have to be aware. And I think um, just just having access to, to those communities to also be able to get the information and the uh, understanding of what is going on. Yeah, Lisa, I would also add that one of the things that I think the program would be interested in working with the APPC on is when we undertake the, uh, what, what, when we continue our work on the uh, public art audit project, mm -hmm. um, that's a, a mapping project that's crowdsourced, but the data that we will get from that and the maps we will get from that should identify um, areas in the city where there's art that we didn't know about or there's no art at all or that uh, we can identify those art deserts and I think that that can be an overlay with the final draft of the general plan and the, the maps that that we have from that so that we're identifying the um, the art deserts overlaid with the equity priority priority areas overlaid with the areas of uh, the opportunity to change areas so that then when we do annual planning and set priorities and are deciding what projects to undertake that we're considering all of that information going forward. Well, how do we identify an art desert or define it? Def we, yeah, I mean, it's not, we, it's a working definition right now. We don't have something that's set in stone, but generally the idea is where there is a lack of 
public art, uh -huh. uh, cultural resources, cultural facilities, um, spaces for community to gather. Uh -huh. um, that's generally what we mean. Oh, but I mean, <laughs> and like, like there, tour, so. yeah, there's also art desert specifically to what the city had been involved with uh -huh. versus mm -hmm. community generated things. Right. And so that's, that's a nuance kind of that we want to pay attention <laughs> yeah. to because yeah. we want to be more equitable about yeah. where the public art funds are invested. Yes. Yeah, totally. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Can I add some something to that? I, I have never heard that uh, term, but I think it's amazing. We have been using it for food and um, the criteria that is used for food is having a uh, uh, half of a mile distance, walking distance from community members. So I know maybe the, the access to art is a little bit different because uh, we don't have that amount of, of art as, as we have of like grocery stores that offer right. fresh produce, but just maybe you, you can create a different, um, totally. a different yep. uh, area and we can help you like figure out the mapping on, on that if, if it's necessary. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I have one question. How is this, um, music video being used. I don't know if you're, maybe people on the committee know better than I do. Uh, the, the strategy just started um, last week. Um, we're using it, number one, as promotion, but also as a recognition of the work that has been done um, by the community. We're presenting it for this, you were the first uh, public space where we have uh, uh, presented it, but we're going to bring it to council too. And for us, this this video is also a connection to the Santa Rosa Forward website. So we want people to visit our website after this. But we're also doing um, promotion through our community um, through through our um, communications team. So they they did a press release. Um, it was out on the news too, and it's been out in different places. We have uh, posters that were created for for us to share the video with community members and a QR code so they can like get access to the video. We uh, you will see it next uh, in the next few days on your uh, water bill. Um, it will be there will be a QR code uh, bilingual QR code uh, that you can see on both sides and get access to the video too. And you'll see a few bus ads uh, that are already out there. I've seen. Mm -hmm. I think we have eight eight buses that that have the the um, the video on and the website. They didn't let us use a QR uh, for the for the buses, but uh, <laughs> but the, for the rest, uh, you'll see a a, a campaign uh, around the video because we want we are aware that um, the planning side might be a little not that attractive for some folks or an unknown world, and we want to introduce people through through a more uh, like fun and um, beautiful way of, of, of doing so. So we're using it as a campaign to pull, pull people to our website. Okay. You're very welcome. As the, as the, um, the general plan comes to a close and we move into this kind of next 30 year phase, are there, are, are there plans in place to maintain some kind of continuity with the campaigns that like this QR code on the water bill thing, <laughs> but like I'm wondering if there are if there's going to be some continuity with the campaign that has sort of been developed to integrate people more directly into planning processes. That's a really great question. We're not there yet, but uh -huh. uh, we'll probably try to do that if you think that's something important for 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 us to do. Um, for, for general plans, usually you have an implementation strategy, and that comes after you have like finalized the, the, the plan. Uh, we haven't got that far in terms of how we're going to do outreach for, for that part. I think our um, engagement, a community involvement strategy gets to the end of the publication and, and adoption of a, of a plan. So TBD, but um, I think that's a, that's a great idea. I was confused. Were you asking about like continued engagement? Well, it seems like a big part of the upshot of uh, sort of integration of various art projects and cultural forms into the planning development has been um, a more robust connection with the general population. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah, curious sort of as, yeah, as one phase closes and we move into implementation, if there are more opportunities that might be generated to you know, continue that work. And the reconception. Oh, sorry. No, I, I just I think that's a really exciting idea. I mean, I feel like we carry 
those ideals and that goal with us with the work that we do with the public art program because I'm always looking for how we're integrating with other city projects and policies and major shifts and change in, in growth or whatever we're doing, but it, it is not a built in automatic thing. So yeah. potentially in the implementation plan, there's an opportunity to identify that there are certain goals um, we need to be meeting to, uh, you know, collaboratively approach the implementation rather than just siloing it into the departments that mm -hmm. that they would generally live in. Yeah. 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 And you know, in terms of I think public art is so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's it's exciting. I know. I get all like, oh and then we could do this. <laughs> Thank you guys today. This has been a really great fruitful conversation, really engaging our brains on how we can be implementing these into future steps and not keeping things in silos, but going forward with more cross collaboration. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we are going to move on to the next item on the agenda. Um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, moving on next to item 3.2, APPC task forces. Staff will facilitate a discussion about the ad hoc task forces, including history, proposed work plans, timelines, and what options exist for moving forward. The recommended action is information and discussion. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. That was great. Keep well, talking. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> we will check back in later. Okay. Bye. Um, okay, thanks, Kristen. I have, I know that this, um, sorry, I have too many packets. Okay, Eric, you could take one of these and then pass the others for now. Some of this you may have already, but I printed out the task force packets, um, which was distributed previously, but just in case, so you can have it in front of you today. And then the new attachment that I created um, to go along with this is kind of just like a history, a diagram to demonstrate the history of the idea of the task forces. So really today, um, we wanted to try to spend some time talking through what the best way to move forward with the idea of um, these ad hoc task forces for the committee. Uh, you know, what, what's the best way to move forward um, and throw out some options and this can be a continuing conversation um, because we had a presentation that needed to happen before this item today um, we may want to spend more time on this and revisit it at a future meeting so there's no pressure that we have to figure in every, everything out today I, we just wanted to have this opportunity come back to the committee because it was on a previous agenda the item was kind of decided that it needed a, a set aside time to be discussed and this can be the start of that and just know that we can revisit it again we don't we don't have to end on it um nothing has to be finalized today so um i thought i would just start by going over this kind of background diagram and then kind of see if there are ideas if people have questions about the actual task force work plans that were distributed um if you still need more time to review those like where we're just at with that and i know that jeff has been active in this conversation he couldn't be here today so um, uh, and Paul, as a new member, I think would really benefit from hearing this conversation. Um, so again, it may be best to have this show up on a future agenda again with a um, continuing conversation. But for today, um, this diagram just kind of is a simplified version of kind of where we started, where the idea of the task force is originated, uh, and then where we are today. So. I don't know if you can see it up on the screen, but you have it in front of you. Um, the idea came from our public art strategic planning process as a way to strategically activate the Art and Public Places Committee to support the implementation of the plan itself. And um, the goal coming out of that recommendation was to define the roles of those task forces, the responsibilities and expectations. And so, um, that plan was adopted in early 2021. And so then shortly thereafter, a couple months later, uh, the committee had a couple conversations at their April and May committee meetings 
where um, we discussed kind of uh, the task force model as a way to activate the APPC so that smaller groups of the members could meet and focus on specific items and tasks that helped us move forward the recommendations of the plan. Um, and so the idea of the three task forces, which are diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, community engagement, and project development, uh, those three ideas uh, were, were presented to the committee and uh, received support to move forward with that. And then members essentially signed up for which task force they wanted to initially serve on. So from, um, from those, from that time, from like May 2021, June 2021, um, uh, going through this, this spring, so like two years essentially, the task, task forces kind of existed. They met as needed, uh, uh, provided report outs to uh, the full uh, committee, uh, met with staff, met with others in the community. Um, and I think then about spring 2022 to um, this past winter, we started working with Kim's in Creative and a part of their scope of work included mentoring and support of those tax task forces. So the task forces began meeting with either Kevin or Nico um, as a part of that mentorship um, support. And then I think feedback from the task forces received either by the program staff or by Nico's team um, there seemed to be a request, a kind of a consistent request for kind of clear work plans, like what specific action items can we actually start working on um, or support. And so that that's what led us to um, these draft work plans. Um, the first document in those pack in that packet is kind of an overview of why we developed the work plan, how to use these work plans, what the anticipated time um, is as we work on these things, what the process is for requesting support from staff, um, what the role of ongoing role of Kim's and Creative would be, um, things like that. And then each task force, the three of them, has a section that is a specific work plan. So it identifies what the objective is of that task force, what areas of our strategic plan were assigned to that task force, um, and then actual deliverables and implementation steps to start taking. Um, these were recommendations. They're not like directives per se. So the idea was that these would be a, um, the first step at documenting what a work plan could be and that each task force would look at this, figure out if there are pieces of it that they wanted to um, break out, um, to say, no, I can't, we, we don't feel like that's a good fit for us right now to help prioritize. Um, so it was a kind of like meant to be a starting point to work from. And so uh, the, I think the question has come up just like, is this still the direction we want to go. Are the three task forces still appropriate focus areas? Should there be a different structure? More task forces, different task forces, less task forces? Um, should, should task forces go away and we focus our efforts kind of in a different way? Like there, there's really kind of an infinite number of ways that I think this could go, but I think the goal still remains that there are areas of the strategic plan and there are just kind of general goals that the APPC has expressed an interest in um, which could be benefited by the idea of more active engagement by committee members on specific projects. So I think that if, if there's, so, so that's one goal. And then another goal would be in order for us to continue um, implementing our strategic plan, I think that support from the committee itself will benefit the plan, will benefit the program, will help us get through the implementation um, in a kind of more meaningful way, but not necessarily the only way that it could happen. So that's kind of where we are at today. So I don't, the rest of the time that we have today, I know is relatively limited. Um, we have what, like less than 15 minutes. Um, 
So if there's a start of a direction you want to, you know, if you have questions, if there's statements you want to make, um, we can just start there and see what might be needed next. Thank you, Tara. I'm going to open it back up for discussion. So um, we are taking questions. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, definitely would probably be good if we can start and figure out the teams and what we're doing. And it is too bad that we don't have the other people here to really focus on, see um, people's strengths and what teams that they should, you know, go towards. You know, should we mix up the team? Should we change this stuff? Like, just like stuff that you were saying, you know, let's think which way should we go here? How should we go about this so we can, um, this can be a discussion and talk about it and think about it. And um, since we do have this this draft plan, um, whichever team we're on, we can review this draft plan and see what needs to be changed and just focus on, um, since there is the three different um, task force, you know, each of the teams can focus on the specific task force to um, the next meeting to want to make changes and, and um, what else, if, we should do, or how do we go about doing that? Um, any questions on that? Instead of um, looking at everything, sure. just to be more specific and focused. And I know um, I don't I'm sure if you're on a team yet. And then since we do have so many other people, new people in here, it is going to be kind of difficult. Yeah, I think <laughs> just just to refresh where we kind of left it, the project development task force had been Kristen and Nathan. Uh -huh. The community engagement task force had been Jeff, and then we were going to just kind of put double into um, Melanie's vacant seat, but uh -huh. that we, that was never really confirmed. It was yeah. just kind of this could happen, but um, but then we kind of started this conversation, so it wasn't really settled. And then the um, the DEIA task force was Lisa and Ann, mm -hmm. um, and I think that you know without like putting you in an awkward position of saying, I don't want to serve with that person anymore. Um, there's an opportunity to say, I'd rather be focused in this area. I'd like to switch task forces or whatever. So if, if that's a conversation that needs to happen, um, we can just start from scratch. We can say like, okay, task forces are going to be this, this, and this. Who wants to sign up for what? We can do the same kind of process that we did before. Whoever signs up first gets that spot kind of a thing. Um, so I mean, there is an opportunity to shake up who's doing what. But I think I um, would like to have a kind of a consensus from the committee that we should go in that direction to begin with, that we should have the same three task forces, that we should have a general work plan like we've started developing for each one. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we kind of have to start over yes. in a way before people are kind of committing to their same task force again. I agree. Um, so yes, I think that's a part of what will come. But yeah, I, I kind of, I mean, if, if there's, with the folks that are here today, if there's a general interest in just taking more time to review and make notes on the current drafts and then coming back at our next meeting to have a continuing conversation about it, that's definitely one way that we can go. Um, or if there's folks here who are just like, nope, this is really, this feels like way too much work. I could never put all my time into this. Then I think we need to kind of revisit what the purpose of the task forces should be and kind of start with that conversation. I mean, I know there's a lot of like variables, right? There's a lot of options here. So like, I kind of want to break it down into what is most helpful to do next before we decide the next several steps after that. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. I think clear objectives and milestones are just a necessity. I just felt like they were just kind of and, and for me, that inviting o that that OPATH alternative art space fair up, mm -hmm. and kind of you know seeing that, realizing that was was a way to workshop, you know, what kind of resources are available through this, like you know, with how we might partner with other organizations like you know, how can we sort of bring a broad range of communities and uh, you know, sort of cultural practitioners together and I I didn't get a clear sense of you know what those things yeah. might be yeah. in the process of realizing that project um, 
Well, I know one of the other questions that you that came up, I think, from you last time was what funding is available yes. to support the work of the task forces, and I think that should be a consideration and a, and a question we we resolve maybe after we figure out yes. if these are the right task forces, if this yes. structure works, because then I think we can look at the rest of our uh, annual plan and expenditure plan for this year and go, well, well these these line items with, you know, what, $5,000 is associated with it, that fits the objective of this task force. Let's funnel those funds totally. to that because mm -hmm. that, that work plan is not specific enough in a lot of the areas where it says exactly what that is meant for. It's general. It's like, you know, incentivize engagement. Um, uh, do things that invite the community in to learn about what you're doing. Like that could take many forms, right? Yeah. So if a task force is working on something, then we can say we can identify that those funds can go towards something like that. Yeah, I think right. that's great. And, and we could even extrapolate that into seeking out community members who are you know, looking for funds potentially or have an idea that they want to realize and, and, and creating distribution that works that way. Mm -hmm. But that's very helpful. So when you're saying that you're into objectives and milestones, is that kind of a vote for this structure? I, I think a lot of work has gone into this and the, yeah. and the potential is there. Uh -huh. It's just a question of whether it's activated in a way that mm -hmm. yeah. things start to happen. Yeah. I think that it's, my sense of it is that it's, it's a good outline and it is also overwhelming at the same time. <laughs> so it's like, it captures the idea, it outlines very specific things, but when you look at it all together, it's like, how can we do all of this? <laughs> at least that's my sense of like, certain committee members' reactions to it, so. So I would like to echo what you had voiced before about you know, an option for today of allocating more time for our team to review these, mm -hmm. uh, this document as it has been presented. And I know something that would help me as I think about this to combat some of that overwhelming mm -hmm. nature uh, would be to assign some of these goals or task force assigned areas around like an event or around something that is timely. Mm -hmm. um, that might be a better way for us to see and see how something works in time of to say like okay well we know that this event happens each year this event has to happen or does happen annually um, does this is this an opportunity for collaboration with the APPC to acknowledge some of these goals that we've set out that might be an easier way for us to get started or, or get more momentum Sure, I, I, I totally hear that. I mean, I think that we can, that may not work for all of them, but I think that there's definitely an overlay that we could provide with like what are, what the actual work plan is, what are the specific projects and programs mm -hmm. um, that are kind of on our uh, to-do list and, and then kind of line up mm -hmm. the assigned areas with those and then instead of like, in, instead of saying, okay, well, one of your, assigned areas is like to increase community engagement okay well that feels really broad and while there are concrete steps to start taking which i think this does start to do really well it breaks it down step by step um it it is a little bit more in the abstract rather than like you said tied to a specific event or project and if that is helpful to have that overlay with it i think that that's something we could Okay. So I would implore our committee members to have more tangible kind of thoughts about this rather than letting the nebulousness of Well, I think, yeah, and if, so we can do it and you can do it too. If you want to start by reviewing it in more detail, looking at it, your assigned or each assigned areas with our current plan that you adopted at the last meeting, because I think that if you are also considering the things that we would be looking at, then maybe you'll trigger some ideas that That's, would be helpful. Okay. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that agreeable to everyone else? I love that, that idea. I totally support your idea that you that you mentioned. I think that's great. Something more tangible, and so we get this idea on how this works and how it goes along, and just get that picture and be a part of it 
then for us to go out there and do what needs to be done, it'll flow a lot easier and better. It's just, you know, because questions will come up when we're present within something and that wouldn't come up when we're just discussing here on paper. Um, and then also too with what Nathan had to say earlier too, um, in regards, you know, we do have this outline and what his questions and, you know, his concerns was, I mean, yeah, I totally agree with you and what you just were talking about when your question was on Tara and the, um, uh, regarding these task force and um, just a clearer objective. So, which, yeah, I think I think that if there are more overarching objectives that mm -hmm. you feel are needed, please, you know, bring 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 that specific kind of like what's missing, like what do you need to help? Because I I think in previous conversations with some of the committee members, there was a kind of um, I think it kind of broke down into either like we're not really sure how to operate. Yeah. within this structure as volunteer committee members and I totally understand I know I totally understand that so if the objective needs to be clear that helps clarify that part of it like mm -hmm. your actual role that 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 could be helpful but then also I think um, like the, the kind of more um, objectives in terms of like you said milestones like it's like if 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 there's a goal to get to by a certain time related to a project like you're saying like i think then you can kind of work backwards and go okay it yeah i mean it it, it takes it takes it into a little bit more like a action oriented smaller chunks and i think that that might be helpful too absolutely yeah. yes okay so then i'm wondering if you know since we're discussing this and we're thinking, yes, since the, we have already had the outlines and there's so much work that has been done on these task force and we decided to do it um, and all of us are going to be reviewing, there definitely uh, should be an email to all members stating to review all of this and kind of give us an idea if there needs to be teams that needs to be switched or someone wants to focus on a different one or which, where would you like to see yourself? and. What is your priority? What are your strengths? And um, what would you like to tackle? I don't know. Yeah, so I think like, for instance, for the October meeting, which is just in a short yes. week, weeks, week and a half, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> it's coming out. Right. <laughs> <No, no, no. laughs> uh, that this, we could have this again on the agenda and then again in November. I mean, it can be continuing. There isn't I mean, currently, the, the goals and objectives of the committee don't have like an expiration date. This is an ongoing mm -hmm. thing. Um, but I think that as we start tightening things up and, and connecting them to actual events or projects or programs, then those timelines do start coming into play. So I think that if we take the time now to really um, have, have an email that goes out to the committee, um, tomorrow or Monday that says, you know, please everyone for the next meeting, please review these, bring, you know, edits, comments, suggestions, but then also think about what are your strengths, what, where do you want to invest any extra time and energy that you have in these task forces so that you can start thinking about that um, for the next discussion. That sounds beautiful. Anything else you want to add? No, um, but that will definitely be Monday and not tomorrow. Yeah, no, yes. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Great. Well, we're still on this item. I will now ask for public comment. Recording secretary, are there any comments on Zoom? Uh, no attendees on Zoom and still no attendees on in person. Great. Thank you, Lonnie. Uh, seeing none, we'll bring the item back to the committee for any further discussion. Um, does anyone else have any additional questions or statements that we would like to put into thought about what, what content should go into that email that will go out on Monday? <laughs> um, 
Let me tell everybody, speak now or forever, we'll just make sure you're going to be put in teams. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to make a comment and maybe in the form of a question in that we have three proposed task forces. We have how many people on this committee? Seven. Seven people. So we'll have like two or three people on each task force. And it seems like a huge job for two or three people to that's just my comment yeah so i think that's something to consider when we're considering how we want to move forward with this that's yeah. just my initial reaction to mm -hmm. to looking at this and thinking okay where do i yeah and i think some, that's some of the feedback that we're looking to have a discussion about is, right is the scope of this reasonable right and and how do we prioritize if it's not mm -hmm. so i think that that's input that would be helpful from committee members especially um as as it, so if we're in a state of things where really no one's assigned to any task force right now it's all we're starting we're starting over right. then i i think it's most helpful to have all committee members review all three work plans right. and provide as much input on you know this is all important but we can't you know this is a big this is a big workload for not paid committee members <laughs> right like your suggestions on this should really be a staff person doing this this should be a consultant can kim's and kim's and creative do this can another consultant do this um or this area seems most important and would let committee members start meeting members of the public in a different way or like having your input everyone's okay. input at that level on each item on each step that are that's identified in there that's most helpful to i think us because then okay. we know how to better then support what you really want to be doing as yeah. a part of this committee okay. like why are you all here why are you serving on this committee Everyone has their own reasons, right. different objectives, different goals. But if there's a way that you can feel more, it can be more rewarding for you, more active, you can get out and meet people, or you can do research projects behind a desk. Like, what is it that's help that you want to do? Okay. Like, bring that information because I think that we're just trying to help the committee do its job. Do its job <laughs> and to feel activated like you're doing okay. something Good. but if we don't know what that actually means to you it's you know we start with something that's like well here's a stab in the dirt guys you know let's do it like, all yeah. <laughs> and it's a lot because that is i mean we're, we're constantly like wow our work plans are huge okay we have to prioritize <laughs> we can't do that for five years great take it off the list i mean that's yeah, the okay. daily thing we're do, dealing with right. so of course it kind of shows up for the committee as well so i think those key things are what would be the most helpful to hear mm -hmm. from each committee member when you can provide us with feedback over the next couple meetings okay what's the largest sort of demand slash pressure on your time Ooh, like where's the question <laughs> <laughs> that um okay that's complicated and i'm just going to go for it um number one i think is jessica's a contractor she's not a, an employee uh -huh. that is very limiting uh -huh. she needs to her, this position whoever it is <laughs> hopefully jessica it needs to be a permanent city position uh -huh. okay. having one regular employee my, my position that isn't even 100 percent dedicated to the public art program mm -hmm. means yeah. that we have very limited resources it means that we can outsource to contractors like jessica even though she's performing the function of a ongoing program yeah. support that should be a regular employee um core services uh um it means that we can hire uh consultants like nico and other consultants that come in and do specific projects or do a strategic plan. So we have that flexibility, we have that uh, ability to do contracts. But when we're looking at actually like the core services, there should be another position at, at the least. Um, for my position, I mean, I have, there's a lot of programs, as you remember from that hand drawn diagram that we've looked at through our <laughs> annual planning process, there's a lot of program areas that fall under um, my responsibility. So we have special event permits 
that should not be a part of the public art program, in my opinion, but that's been assigned to me and has followed me for years. So I can get rid of it. Um, so, I mean, like, I, I, can, I can tell you, like, honestly, that those things should change, whether or not they can with the current environment that we're in, the structure we have within the city, the workloads, the budget, mm -hmm. the city's overall budget situation. I don't know if any of those things can change. But in a perfect world, those would be the the top items that I would address. What what is assigned to me, including removing special events from mm -hmm. my uh, uh, plate, and then creating um, having a, a permanent position added for the work that Jessica performs. Is there a way that we as individuals or as a committee can lobby to have a position? I don't know the answer to that right now. I think that if there's a if there's a path forward for that, I I can try to find that out and let you know. I think it, it generally comes down to the city's budget and um, taking on a new position means a commitment long term that the city has to kind of pencil in and pencil out for for like 30 years, you know what I mean? And it right. includes pension and benefits. So there, there it's not just it's a not simple like, it. look, there's an extra, there's extra money here this year. We can use it for that. It's not that simple. So I'm not exactly sure the process uh, by which committee members, I know that general public as, as a member of the general public and, and saying that and not affiliating yourself with the art public places committee per se, you have the opportunity to come before council during its annual budget study session um, and budget planning every year to say what you're interested in seeing the city spend its money on. Um, but but you can't really represent the committee. Mm -hmm. You can represent yourself as a private citizen. So I'm not exactly sure what the process is for the committee to try to advocate for things. I, I can try to find an answer, though, and let everyone know. I mean, I think yeah. it would, yeah help if that if that's a way to help get it to happen mm -hmm. it would be nice yeah but it sounds like it's a <laughs> yeah and we've yeah. attempted through our stumbling block processes process. and it hasn't happened i'm sorry we we've attempted to do this okay. ourselves on this end and it unfortunately hasn't happened yeah i think that there's um you know just in in terms of looking at the strategic plan and implementing it, what other projects come up that we have to allocate our time to, even if it's not a like funding request necessarily. Um, I think that that can be also um, considered by the, by the committee. Maybe the opportunity to do that is, um, you know, our, our current strategic plan is essentially sunsets. It's supposed to go from 2021 to 2024. So like next year, theoretically, would be like the end of that plan. Obviously, we're not going to be done implementing it, and it shouldn't just go away. But I think that there should be an opportunity for the committee to start having conversations about how does this plan get extended or live on farther than the three, year, it, three years it was origin, originally envisioned to be. And how do we then prioritize what staff is doing? Because maybe there isn't a need to do something that we've been doing, right? Or maybe that when we get requests to do something like the project for Fire Station 5, we say, no, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that that is what we should have done. Right, right. I'm just, I get I'm, it's an example of how do we prioritize the opportunities that come to us or that we're asked to do. And if there's something that the committee is helping put in place like an extension of our strategic plan and each annual work plan if that's very clear what we're supposed to do that year it's easier for us to say no when the other things come up and we're asked to do them so that's another way the committee could help that, that was kind of what i was wondering it's like where that like how much latitude do you have to pick and choose between projects that come, come across your desk and send your own agenda mm -hmm. and if it makes sense for us as a committee to yeah. you around those questions and think about sort of redirecting the projects. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's not a lot of totally out of the blue random things that are coming to us and uh -huh. we're like, yeah, sure, we'll do that. 
it really is all somehow related to what we're supposed to be doing, implementing the strategic plan, or when it's a capital project. I think that that to me is one of the more interesting kind of um, considerations is when there are city capital projects, how much do we want to advocate for and offer our services, either funding or staff time, to make sure art is a part of those projects? And that's independent from the 1% for the arts? Yes, because 1% for the art is private development. We don't get yeah. involved with those. We get involved with when the city is saying, look, we're building a new courthouse square, we're building a new community center, and this is going to come up really soon. We're building a new community center, library, and fire station in Roseland. Should art be a part of that? That would be a huge project. I don't know if there's funding. I don't know if the public art fund would be asked to allocate funds to it. But if there's a desire to put art there, which I think there probably will be, how much can we support that? One of the things I thought was kind of fun about today was that uh, questions of definition about how art gets thought about and what kinds of feedback mechanisms might potentially be sort of latent within uh, municipal engagement with the public, right? And like opening up those questions of definition and how they get navigated to people as opposed to sort of plunking down a you know, going through the design review process and plunking down the statue or whatever in front of the new building is like exciting. I don't know how much room there is to, you know, sort of open up those kind of a more you know, complicated weird processes as as public per yeah. se. Yeah. But that like that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And like putting a hat of a whatever that whatever that thing is on the water bill, like sends you a video they made. Like, <laughs> that's like I mean, that's pretty out there actually, and like, interesting possibility. And it's not probably not expensive if they just did it, you know. Yeah, I I mean I this isn't really a part of this discussion with task forces, but I mean I think it's related because I think that it's. The, to me, it's a bigger conversation about the, the work that the, the program, the staff are doing and what is in our annual work plan, what we're chipping away with, uh, we're chipping away on, on in our um, strategic plan. You know, our master plan is still a valid document. It identifies like areas of the city and different topics that should be the focus for public art. Like how does all of that, then you add in the new general plan update then you add in new projects and fire stations, communities. I mean, there's a lot of considerations that come in. And it's like, I think it, it, I find it helpful. And we just don't have a lot of time to do this uh, ourselves. But maybe it can be a joint meeting at some point, the um, committee with, the, with staff, to really just kind of like brainstorm and vision. Like, OK, let's draw it out. What are all of the sources that come in that provide ideas, direction, um, strategies, specific projects that were being asked to, you know, like put it all there. What are the outcomes of those things? What are they achieving? Are they in alignment with the core vision and mission that we've adopted? Um, are there funding sources attached to all of them? And then how do we prioritize? <laughs> like, because that's a lot. I mean, we, we actually, are, Santa Rosa has a very robust public art program with a tiny little staff and budget. But we have a huge collection. We're barely able to just keep it all looking okay. <laughs> we don't have a registrar. We don't have a position that, that whose job is actually to make sure all of our pieces are where they're supposed to be, <laughs> that they're being taken care of, who the artist is. We, you know, we're... We're like, this is a shoestring <laughs> public art pro program. There are models in bigger cities that have more robust budgets um, of how to really have a full, um, staff, fully staffed program. And I think that we're, we're growing and we're seeing what we might need to add. We just, unfortunately, I don't think are in an environment in the near future that we'll be able to grow. So how do then we then temper all these grand things that we want to do, that we see that are needed to what's manageable, um, how to, how is the APPC involved in supporting that through task forces or otherwise? How do we outsource work with consultants? Are there volunteer groups we can form alliances with? 
like the idea of toolkits was put in place so that we empower the community and artists to just do their own projects yeah. so that right like there's a lot of parts of the puzzle that we're trying to piece together but um, I find it helpful to step back every once in a while and just look at everything and go okay this is all a part of a much bigger thing and there's a lot of different moving parts and considerations so maybe tackling the task forces with a you know bigger picture in mind would be helpful too Tying it back to the task force. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we might need to wrap up today because yeah. we're over time already. But yes. I really appreciate all of your feedback today, and we'll just keep keep working at it. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. <laughs> I would like to echo that, and we'll move the meeting to the end of our agenda now today. Um, thank you for that presentation and discussion. Leading that discussion, there is a lot for us to unpack and get back to you. So, um, with limited resources, so we will work on it. Um, I did see on the agenda that there is an opportunity for announcements. Is that okay to do one at this moment, or? Um, there really isn't on the agenda today, so. I will save my announcements okay, for sorry. our next <laughs> regular schedule. If there's because. something you'd like to share with the full committee, you can email it to me and I can send it out to folks. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on to adjournment. The next regular meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee is scheduled for Monday, October 2nd. Okay. Uh, we will stay tuned for location. <laughs> it should be back in our normal spot. But that's okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And have a great afternoon. <laughs>